Okay, so rather than film every little step with these pickles, um, what I've done here is uh, the, the days one through seven, we just had our pickles in the crock or jar, whatever you're using, with, a, with cold water covering them. I'm sorry about the mower, Papa's mowing outside. And um, uh, let's see, it's about, it's a, it's a pint of salt, pickling salt per gallon of cold water. So then you let that sit for the first seven days. On the eighth day, oh no, I'm sorry, on the seventh day, you drain that salt water off and then you cover it with boiling water, well, boiled water that has cooled slightly and let that sit overnight. So now we're on the eighth day. We're gonna drain this again. And we're actually gonna cut the cucumbers into pieces for what will be our pickles. And then we're going to cover it again with the boiling water that is cooled. But we're also gonna include uh, two tablespoons of alum and two tablespoons of prepared horseradish. Now, if you had actual horseradish root, you could do that, but I don't have that. And I've found uh, from other people that, that they use prepared horseradish and that's what I did when I made them the first time and it worked just fine. So that's what we're gonna do. And then um, I will show you what happens tomorrow <laughs> after that that will be day nine okay so the the sliced cucumbers have been sitting in the water that was boiled and then slightly cooled but we also added the alum and the horseradish now i'm going to drain them from this and we are going to add just uh, the boiling water that is cooled yet again for this day. So it's just a matter of pouring out all that wine. And I will rinse out the jar as well. put these back in and when the water has boiled and cooled slightly I will fill it back up and that's an, all we're doing for this day okay so we are on the next day and we are going to mix up uh, basically the brine or syrup that is going to end up being canned with pickles this is actually the pickling uh, the beginning of it so, and it takes a lot of sugar, more than you can imagine. I mean, this is ridiculous, but the first time I made it, I thought that's just insane, but it actually, it works. Um, uh, it makes a very good crunchy sweet pickle, so that's what we're after. And um, it takes five quarts of sugar. That comes out to 20 cups of sugar, folks. So yeah, it's a lot. And then the craziest part is it only takes three pints of uh, apple cider vinegar. So I've got half the sugar in here uh, and I've got the other half in this bowl that I measured it out with, but I'm gonna put the apple cider vinegar in there first and I'm not too worried if I'm a little over on this because I think I've got more pickles than uh, the recipe actually calls for just a little bit anyway now we're also going to add um, some cinnamon sticks a couple tablespoons of whole cloves and a couple tablespoons of celery seed. Now I need to finish adding the rest of this sugar. We're gonna bring this to a boil and then let it cool just slightly. And we're gonna drain our pickles 
from the water that we had on yesterday. And uh, then we're going to put them back into the crocs and um, top them off with this instead of water. So that is the plan. And I will show you tomorrow what we're going to do with it after that. Okay, so here we are the next day and we are going to drain our pickles of the syrup and then we're gonna bring that back to a boil again and pour it back over them. Um, I have no explanation why that is necessary, but that is how it works and that is what we're gonna be doing today. Now I did put um, a plastic lid down there to kind of hold that in place so that everything would stay submerged. Uh, I don't know that that's actually necessary, but it's what it did anyway. And it, this stuff is very sticky, so just be aware of that. And what I'm gonna do is just try to pour this into here. Oh, well, you don't have to get every little bit. Uh, so there we go. And we gotta put these back in here. And we gotta bring this syrup to a boil and then we will pour it back over the pickles. And that is all that we have to do for today. And we're gonna do this for, I'll have to look and see how many days exactly we do this. But when I bring you back, the next time it's going to be when we actually get ready to can the pickles because this is the only other process there is. And when I come back, I'll tell you exactly how many days we did that. And, uh, and then I'll show you exactly how we can them up. Okay, we're at day 14. And so we are going to can these pickles. We're going to do the open kettle method for these pickles because there's so much brine in here that is pickling that you don't need to, I mean, you can actually water bath can them and I suppose that's probably the official recommendation, but that's not what we're gonna do. <laughs> we're going to open kettle them. So that means we'll bring this to a boil, put them in the jars, uh, put the lids on them, and an old trick is to flip the jars over so that 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 really hot liquid gets on the lid itself as it's on the jar and then flip it back and that will uh, seal it. Now this is not going to seal it with the pickling liquid, it's just the heat from it is going to seal it. I think I've seen some people that don't turn them over, but that was uh, actually taught to me by Grandma Jackson <laughs> that uh, we did that with tomato juice back in the day when uh, tomatoes were much more acidic than they are today for some reason. I don't know if they've, uh, uh, the hybrid tomatoes now are no longer as acidic or something, but it used to be when I'd work with those, my hands would get all red and blotchy and that doesn't happen anymore. So um, I always, when I do, uh, tomato products, I tend to add a little bit of lemon juice to it, even though I don't do open kettle anymore with those. Um, I still add the, the extra uh, lemon juice to it. So anyway, back to the pickles. And I'm going to empty these crocs into this pan and bring it to a boil. Okay, so this has come to a boil. And you can see I've got my jars laid out here with the lids and rings. And what I'm gonna do is try to get some pickles in this first jar and then pour some of the liquid in it. Um, this is so sticky. <laughs> it gets kind of tricky here.
and it's getting all over the jar. That's why I have a towel there to, because I will wipe all these jars off when I'm done. And this jar's getting almost too hot to handle. Hmm. Now I was going to put <clears throat> or wipe off the rim a little bit first before I put the lid on. And I got this oven mitt out to help me hold that jar, which I don't know how well that's going to work on my left hand, but we're going to try it. Now this is one of the instances where you're really going to tighten that ring on there because uh, when you're canning a lot of times you want to uh, not have it all the way tightened but uh, especially in a pressure canner but we are tightening these lids down pretty good and uh, since this is going to be kind of a process I will bring you back when I get done here and we'll see how many jars we ended up with all right you can see that is a lot of pickles and you can also see that I reused a jar here that was from uh, some uh, olives that the papal really likes. You can do this. Uh, I'm, well, <laughs> that is definitely not approved by any standards <laughs> other than old time canning, <laughs> rebel canning. Uh, as long as this jar seals again, it is just as if. Uh, for pickles, especially, um, that will work. Um, that will probably be the first jar that we, we get into, but uh, regardless, it should seal just fine. But um, the rest of them are regular canning jars with regular canning lids and all that. So I am waiting for them to seal. I just flip them back over. As they cool, we'll begin to hear the pops of uh, those lids sealing, and that will be that. And that's a lot of pickles. Um, so anyway, some of the best pickles you ever make is 14-day pickles. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.